Hello everybody and welcome back to our new tutorial which is going to be mostly devoted to the different types of sockets such as Unix domain sockets and raw sockets and how we can actually create them. So we're going to take a look at that. What we did in the previous video is we took a look at the creation of the uh, UDP client and server and we also saw how they can interact with each other, what's the differences between the UDP client and the TCP client, as well as what is the difference between the UDP server and the TCP server. And right now we're going to start off with the Unix domain sockets and how we can actually create them. So basically, first of all, open up your idle right here. As usual, what we need to do is we need to import the sockets library, so import socket. And basically the Unix domain sockets are available on the Unix based systems, of course, which makes sense. And sometimes they are used for fast IPC or pipes between processes. Now the creation is rather similar as the creation of the regular TCP socket or uh, UDP socket that we used before. Uh, just specify sock equals, which is going to be the, the name of our socket object, socket.socket. .socket. And now, instead of specifying socket.afinet and then comma sock underscore stream, you should specify socket.af underscore unix, everything capital, and after that, socket.sock underscore stream. Socket has no attribute af underscore unix. Let me just see right here, dear socket. Sock.raw, sockdgram, let me just see. AFINet, okay. Let's just try to find it right here. Okay, so we got the IPX, INET, INET6. Yeah, of course, I'm not really sure why I even try to find this. Let us just go and open up the Yeah, I'm not really sure why I even try to actually use it on the Windows 10 machine. What you need to do is you would need to have a, a Unix based machine or a Linux machine and basically the creation would be the same. Just of course, in that case, the actual creation would work right now. It won't really work because you're simply using the Python 3 for basically Windows 10, which is the XE version of Python 3. Therefore, there is not AF underscore Unix for the socket crea creation of the uh, Unix system. So once again, if you wanted to create it, you would simply specify s equals socket.socket if you are running Linux, of course, and then socket.af underscore Unix and then comma socket.soc underscore stream. You would press your enter and then that would work. The same goes with the actual uh, UDP uh, client, UDP socket. So socket.socket, socket.af underscore unix, and then comma socket dot, and you simply just specify sock underscore dgram, which represents the UDP, okay? Now, the address can simply be a file name in the Unix domain system, so you know that once we actually specify the TCP client in our Windows 10 environment, we would need to specify s.bind, and then in between the double open and double close brackets, what we will specify is the IP address, and then we would specify the port. Now in the Unix based system, address can be simply a file name. So what you would specify right here is, for example, a temporary directory, so s.bind, and you specify slash tmp slash and then some directory doesn't even matter basically uh, this is the server binding and then the client connection what the client actual program would perform in order to connect we know that in windows 10 environment we will need to specify as dot connect and then specify the ip address of the actual server as well as the port on which we want to actually connect now the in the unix based systems it is simply just connecting to the directory so all you will need to do is specify in the uh, client side code as dot connect and then in between the brackets you would specify the actual directory to which you want to correct, uh, connect, or basically the file name. As we know, in Unix-based systems, address can be a file name. 
Now the rest of the program that you would write in order to perform the server and client connection is rather the same. So rest of the programming interface will be the same as in the Windows 10 environment that we already saw before. Now another thing that you want to actually know about is the raw socket. So let me just delete this. We already imported sockets. Now if you have for example a root or administrator access you can gain direct access to the raw network packets. Now what does that mean? Well first of all it depends on the system and the second of all what the Linux uh, packet sniffing would look like is simply just creating the socket like this. So s equals socket dot socket and then in between the brackets instead of specifying af unix or af inet you would simply specify socket dot af underscore packet and basically uh, then you can specify which protocol for example socket dot sock underscore dgram which stands for udp now of course because this is on unix it will throw us an error right here saying module socket has no attribute af underscore packet because this is only working in the Linux systems, okay? Then right after it, all you would need to do is specify the actual interface which you want to bind to and also which type of packets you want to sniff. Now, what I mean by that is simply, let me just show you in the command prompt and for those of you who are using Linux, you can simply just type ifconfig in your terminal. So open up your terminal on your Ubuntu machine or any Linux machine that you are using type I've config right here I will type IP config because right here I'm on Windows 10 and once you type that on Linux you should see the name of your actual device or the name of your actual uh, networking uh, interface which can be either ETHO, w, uh, WLAN, WLO uh, Z1 or 0 doesn't even matter it can be different for every system it is usually ETH0 especially if you're running a virtual machine or something like that it will be ETH0 and then in order to sniff the packets on a certain interface what you would specify is s.bind and instead of binding the actual directory or the IP address with the port number what you would bind is the interface with the protocol number. So what I mean by that is simply it will take two arguments. So once again, you will open and close double brackets right here. And what the first argument would be is the name of your interface. So all you would need to do is check the name of the interface on which you are connected to the internet because make sure if you have multiple interfaces that you choose the one that you have connected internet connection with. What the, uh, how you can check that is simply if you have the IP address asserted to you, that means you're probably connected, therefore you can pick that one, okay? And then in between the double quotes, you will need to specify the name of that interface. So in our case, let's say it is ETH0 because that is the most common one and the most the probability of you finding this are greater than any other. Then the second argument would be the protocol number and what does that mean is basically which type of packets you want to sniff for example let's say we want to sniff the uh, IP packets from the IP header uh, basically you would specify the IP packet number which is 0x0888 or pardon me 800 then you would specify this you would press your enter now of course this will not work because I don't really have the ETH0 interface and I'm not on the Linux systems. And then all you would need to do in order to receive a packet is simply just specify a while true loop. And in that while true loop, you would simply just specify, for example, message and then address. And the reason why we have message address is because notice right here that our socket object has sock underscore dgram, which is UDP packets and not TCP packets. Therefore, we are not going to store the client's socket object anywhere in our memory. We can simply just connect with the client over address. And then you specify equals as dot receive from and specify the amount of bytes. So 4096, let's say. Now you would press your enter and basically this would receive the packets in Linux system. It would get a packet to you. Okay, so simple as that. Basically, that is all you want to know about the raw sockets. Of course, there are more things about them, but for now on, uh, 
this would be more than enough as this is the beginner's course uh, now another thing that you want to uh, take a look at but first of all let me just restart this because we got too many errors since we are not running on the Ubuntu machine now also one more thing that you want to know is that servers usually handle multiple clients so what we did by now is we actually took an example of creating the TCP and UDP client and server but we only accepted one connection and you should know that these servers handle multiple connections most of the time. So, uh, in order to create something like that, you will need to specify that the, each client gets its own socket on server. Now, why is that? Well, simply, let's say you're creating, you're creating a TCP connection, which you most likely are, because there is no really point creating UDP connection with the multiple clients and be mostly because it is connectionless and you really need to specify the address in order to communicate with a specific client in the TCP connection what you need to do is simply just create a socket object and then accept the connection which will store the uh, socket object of the client into the first variable so if you remember we would specify something like this s equals socket dot socket and in between the brackets socket dot af underscore inet in order to create the ipv4 connection and then socket dot sock underscore stream then you would press your enter and then while true loop can accept the actual connection so ca equals s dot accept and therefore you would right now accept the connections okay now it says right here invalid argument is supplied because we didn't really bind or listen or didn't perform any other connection or pardon me we didn't perform any other function that we need to for now on i just want to show you how you accept connections in this tcp connection so right here this variable c would store the client socket object okay so now another thing that you should know to in order to manage multiple clients is that the server must always be ready to accept new connections so therefore uh, what we're going to do in the next tutorial is we are going to uh, introduce ourselves with the term called threading. So we're going to introduce ourselves with the threading in Python 3. Now, uh, you know why we need to actually learn that? Well, simply because of this statement that the server must always be ready to accept new connections. You, you know that this accept function hangs until a new connection is connected to you. Now you don't want your program to always pause while waiting the connections. You want your program to continue executing uh, at the same time as it is accepting new connections. And in order to perform something like that, you need to make a threaded server. Now also the server must allow each client to operate independently. Each may be performing these different tasks on the server, therefore they need to perform independently. Okay, and what we will do is we will basically code a briefly or a brief outline for this solution but before we actually do that what we want to do is we want to introduce ourselves with threading and then after we learn threading we will go on into the threaded server okay so that would be about it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i hope i will see you in the next one bye